Well, I think I'm going to uh, kick it right into uh, our session here. I know there's uh, there's a lot of other competing priorities at this uh, at this hour, um, uh, other sessions, and uh, we're getting towards the end of our uh, of our conference here. But uh, thank you for uh, for joining us. I think I think you'll enjoy um, what we uh, what we have to present today. Um, so the big question that uh, we're going to uh, be uh, it's going to be in the background of everything we we talk about is a problem that uh, has been talked about quite a bit, which is that there's really too much scholarly content for, uh, for comprehension out there. There's uh, uh, 8,000 articles a day, two and a half million uh, a year. Um, it's it's, it's uh, very unlikely that any one pub paper is going to be uh, even read, let alone um, cited. So um, what do we do about it? So there's really two sides of that of that issue. One is on the researcher's side. How do you find the content that, that is going to be most influential, most interesting for your work? And uh, the second is the other side is, is on the publisher and on the author's side. Is, uh, you know, I've written a paper. How do I get that paper um, seen? How do I best do that in a, you know, in a, in a, uh, in a scalable way? Um, so we have a great panel here representing a, uh, a number of different stakeholder uh, perspectives in, uh, with these, these two questions. Um, we're going to start off, on, this will be in this, in this order. Uh, so Simon Inger, uh, some of you, many of you probably know Simon. He is um, uh, well known for the uh, discovery survey, how readers discover content in scholarly publications. Uh, along with Tracy Gardner, they've been doing that now uh, several, several iterations of that survey every few years. And there's a brand new one that has just been completed. So um, we're going to have some breaking news in this, uh, in this session here on what the latest results are from that survey. Uh, Letty Conrad, uh, also you may know her from the Scholarly Kitchen uh, as well as other places. She is a consultant uh, now, uh, but she's worked in product development and uh, and has, has done quite a bit of, of, uh, of, of research in the course of her career and now is in a doctoral program um, in, uh, in information science. Uh, uh, Lisa Hinchliffe uh, at the very end over there. Um, some of you may have read Lisa's article that came out, uh, I guess it was in January, about uh, user-centered discovery in the library. Lisa is at uh, University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana. Uh, and um, uh, she, she has some uh, very interesting perspectives from the library side of things, and I, I, I think you'll enjoy hearing her. And then from the publisher side, we have two uh, representatives of some of the most prestigious journals in their fields. Uh, Mark Ruthman uh, from the American Academy of Pediatrics is, um, is here. He's responsible for platform features that increase discovery and engagement of users. Um, he's looking at ways users interact with the AAP news and journals gateway uh, in order to improve discoverability and utility, uh, adding features like video recommendations, um, uh, other things that many of you in the publishing world are, are looking at as well. And Stacy Burke, I didn't mean to make you the last one here on our <laughs> list, but, but uh, they, they, I, I, I like to think I saved the best for last. But, <laughs> so, um, She's marketing and communications manager for uh, science publishing at American Society for Microbiology. And um, so she's responsible for marketing programs towards authors and um, uh, towards institutional users of uh, the ASM books and, uh, and, and other content. Uh, so by way of introduction, um, why I uh, put this panel together and, and uh, ask these uh, people to, uh, to join me, is uh, my, my personal involvement uh, as uh, uh, director of partnerships for TrendMD is really on the business side of the, of the issue. So I'm, I'm really more atten uh, at at attentive to the, uh, the publisher business issues. And um, essentially, uh, you know, publishers have had a few different ways of increasing accessibility and visibility for their journals. Uh, one of the biggest recently, of course, open access making, uh, uh, tearing down a, a very important barrier to, um, uh, to, to users, to, to their content. Um, 
SEO, uh, but, but you know, one of the, uh, the, the drawbacks to open access, of course, is it's very disruptive to the traditional um, business model of, 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 um, uh, of selling journals. Um, SEO is, is great, but you know, as they say, it's, all ships uh, uh, rise with the, with the tide. And uh, so everybody is, is, is doing SEO, obviously. And uh, it's, it's not giving a single publisher the opportunity for, um, for competitive advantage. Uh, at best, you can keep up with everybody else. Um, and there's been a number of studies on social media and its effect on uh, discoverability in, uh, in recent years. But um, one of the findings, and there were a couple of papers in uh, the journal Circulation last year uh, that, that showed that, that while uh, social media was increasing the visibility and, and, and even downloads, it was not having an effect on, uh, on whether on journals getting cited. So um, one of the things that, that Trend MD tries to address is, is how, do we, uh, how do we solve that problem, which is really the more pressing problem for many, uh, you know, many publishers. So we, we take a technology approach um, with a recommendations widget that uh, can be installed on uh, sites, and, and you can see uh, an example here. It's a discovery engine, essentially, is what we think of it as. And, um, it's increasing the, the, uh, the visibility and awareness of, of uh, recommended articles. Um, and uh, it, it's important for users as well because it gives them additional information. Uh, it adds to the, the usability of the, of the website as well. Um, and the way we do this is through what's called collaborative filtering. Some of you may be familiar with that term. It's, um, it's the same. Uh, technology that's used by Amazon. Uh, if you think of when you buy a teapot on Amazon, you're not going to be recommended six other teapots. So um, you're going to be recommended things that other users who read that article also clicked on. So the algorithm is built around what is the most likely content that the user reading this, this, uh, this paper is, is likely to click on. And, that, and that's so, you know, that really means that two users looking at the same article may not see the same recommendations. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an approach to, to, this, uh, uh, to this issue. And effectively what we've done is we've created a, a cross-publisher network. So the ability for, for publishers to, um, uh, to leverage their organic traffic um, and through a credit system um, be able to uh, have their content exposed on other on other sites, uh, as well as um, uh, to, to users. And the, the effects of it have been measurable. We've had a few studies that, that have shown uh, some of, the, uh, um, some of the, the, the effects. The most recent was uh, an article that was published last fall in the journal Scientometrics. Um, what we looked at in that study was, was the uptake of uh, users saving articles to their Mendeley accounts. And the reason we, that was important was because Mendeley accounts and a number of other studies have been shown to, uh, to be uh, important indicators of eventual citation. And kind of intuitively that makes sense. If users are going to save it in their Mendeley accounts, it's likely that they're going to come back to that article and potentially cite it. So, um, so we were looking at that. We took a feed of, of um, uh, the uh, Mendeley uh, saves and um, articles that were saved. So 400 articles looked at randomly. Um, 200 organic discovery, 200 promoted by TrendMD, and 77% um, higher uh, incidence of, of uptake uh, in, in Mendeley accounts. Um, and uh, there were some other, uh, other effects of it that were, were pretty remarkable and striking um, in terms of uh, increase in total page views, um, even increase of, of um, page views uh, in um, in articles in, for users who did not come to the article through the through the, the TrendMD link, um, meaning that uh, that the uh, just the presence of the widget on the page was increasing the discoverability of the article. And, and there's a couple of reasons for that potentially. One one is that um, those additional links gave uh, higher search engine optimization to those articles, um, but also. Uh, there, there is some evidence that, that when people are recommended an article and discover it and read it, 
they're more likely to, to uh, uh, you know, reference it to their friends, to their colleagues, email it, um, and word of mouth. So uh, we, we, we've seen the, these effects as well. And um, there's quite a few publishers, many of them uh, are here, um, who, um, who are using TrendMD already. And uh, we're happy to talk to others. Uh, the, the, the larger the network gets, the more users, the better the, the technology uh, is as well. So, uh, so that's, that's me, and that's enough of me. Um, I'd like to uh, get to uh, our, our first of our panelists. Uh, so Simon Inger, uh, uh, Simon has some great uh, information for us from the, uh, from the study, and I want to give him as much time as he needs on this. So please, Simon. <laughs> 